A new PC chip maker can game. Huge performance boost from AMD. 8GB GPUs are completely dead, and AMD just announced their new desktop Ryzen 8000 CPUs. And they're not what you think. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, the company Qualcomm recently said some pretty exciting stuff about their upcoming Windows notebooks, specifically that they can game. If you've never heard of Qualcomm, let's just say if you've ever owned an Android device, it was likely in it. But the reason we haven't really seen any of these in pretty much any desktop or notebook PCs is because they're ARM based. But that's about to change. As you can see right down here, it says in a 2024 Game Developers Conference session titled Windows on Snapdragon, a platform ready for your PC games, this Qualcomm engineer drove home that the unannounced laptops will use emulation to run x86 64 games at close to full speed. In fact, they're pretty much telling game developers that titles should already work on their upcoming Windows laptops no porting required. Now I will say that some people are giving them a little bit of flack for saying that they should work. It's like, why don't you already know? But keep in mind that there are thousands of games out right now. There's pretty much no way they could test them all. But the way this sounds, it's likely gonna work on most, if not all games. And that's definitely pretty exciting. As you can see right down here, it says that developers shouldn't need to change the code or assets of their games to get full speed. Most games are graphically bottlenecked by the GPU, not the CPU. And that's the key here. Reading further, it says Qualcomm says GPU performance is unaffected. And while Qualcomm sees some slight hit to CPU performance when it's translating or transitioning between X64 and ARM64, it only happens the first time a block of code gets translated, subsequent passes are direct cache access. Basically, when doing the emulation, there is going to be at least a little hit to the CPU, but the GPU isn't affected. And at least in this case, the GPU is almost certainly going to be the bottleneck here. Of course, with all of that said, one of the real questions that I have is, are we talking 720p 30fps or 1440p 60fps? Obviously, these are integrated GPUs, so they're not going to be the fastest thing out there or anything like that, but Apple has at least shown us that ARM chips can be pretty impressive. So this really, I think, is pretty exciting, but once again, we really do have to ask what they mean by these games running you know are they running at 5 fps or are they running at 60 fps qualcomm further goes on to state that it has adreno drivers for dx11 dx12 vulcan and opencl and will also support dx9 and up to opengl 4.6 via mapping layers so yeah it looks like amd intel and nvidia may soon be getting some real competition of course if you're like many and you're sick of all the wild gpu prices it's time to get your very own dedicated gaming pc for as little as $9.95 Canadian dollars, which is around $7.50 USD a month with today's sponsor. Maximum Settings, the best solution to get the latest PC hardware without spending an arm and a leg. And the best part is that they're not just some server that you're having to share with 20 other people so you can only use 10% of its resources. Instead, Maximum Settings gives you access to your very own bare metal gaming PC. So it's as if you bought your very own PC, but for way less money. You can go in, install your games from Steam, Origin, Epic, and more. And they're saved for when you log off, so you can come right back the next day, just like you could if it was your PC. And they have options all the way up to an RX 7900 XTX with a 7800 X3D, 750 gigabytes of SSD storage, and 4 terabytes of HDD storage. So you can really crank up your settings. And the best part is that it only takes a few minutes to set up. So stop worrying about GPU prices and try out maximum settings by visiting the link in the description below. And next up for today, AMD just fixed a major issue for their recently released RX 7900 GRE. For those who haven't seen my video on that, the 7900 GRE is officially available everywhere. It originally launched in China as a China-only GPU, but it finally made its way to the US. And of course, I was covering all of that transition, so if you love staying up with all the new PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. With that said, the GPU came with one pretty big issue. While you could overclock the memory, you could only do it by very little, 
we're talking 2316 megahertz. Well, AMD has officially fixed this issue. Well, actually, I call it an issue. That's what AMD says. You can see here it says AMD declared the limited memory overclocking range a bug and promised to fix. But that only really happened when it was globally announced. And like Tech Power Up says, it was probably to put in place to ensure the 7900 GRE has a near identical total board power as the RX 7800 XT. Either way, whether it was a bug or it wasn't, it has now been fixed. It says AMD lifted the memory overclocking limits of the Radeon RX 7900 GRE graphics card with its latest Adrenaline 24.3.1 driver. In fact, it can actually be pushed all the way up to 3000 megahertz. Though obviously that's going to be dependent on which GPU you have, things like that, but Tech Power Up was actually able to get theirs all the way up to 2604 megahertz. And Believe it or not, you actually got some pretty nice performance uplift out of this. As you can see right here, the regular 7900 GRE in 3D Marks times by Extreme GT1, it gets 67.1 FPS. Then with the regular memory overclock that they were able to get before this, they were able to get it up to 72.6, but now it gets all the way up to a whopping 14.9% faster up to 77.1 FPS. So at least in this, we're talking upwards of a 15% performance boost. Definitely not bad at all, especially because it brings it up quite a bit faster than the 4070 Ti as well as the 3090 Ti. Of course, this is only tested in one synthetic benchmark. I would really love to see it tested in multiple games, so don't expect 15% in every game or anything like that. You may get a little more, you may get quite a bit more, you may get quite a bit less, but still 15%, like I said, really impressive. And next up, Horizon Forbidden West has officially been released on PC. Of course, the game was technically released something like a couple years ago on PS5 and PS4, but it is now on PC. And let's just say what I've been talking about, 8GB of VRAM, seems true yet again. 8GB just is not enough anymore. As you can see right here at 1080p, very high, GPUs do around what you would expect, until you get down to the 4060 Ti. You can see average FPS right at the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti, but when we look at 1% lows, it drops drastically. We're talking 1% lows of the 16 gigabyte model at 59 FPS, while the 8 gigabyte model is just at 36. And don't forget that this is 1080p and this game does not have ray tracing, so you can't really blame it on that. Moving down to the 4060, it performs right around what you would expect until once again we get down to those 1% lows, we're now below 30 FPS. Luckily, when we look at the 7600 and 5700 XT, they do absolutely see a drop. There clearly is an issue with eight gigabyte GPUs, but while it does see a drop, it doesn't see nearly as much of a drop as NVIDIA's GPUs. So yes, you might could argue that this is an issue with optimization, but don't forget that NVIDIA has actually been advertising this game for quite a while, and yet their GPUs are having the biggest issue. And honestly, even if it is an optimization issue, given the fact that so many games have been coming out, major releases that have issues with eight gigabytes of VRAM, clearly they aren't doing the optimizations needed. If that is the problem, of course, I'm arguing that it likely isn't, but even if it is the case, this is simply the reality we live in. And lastly for today, AMD officially announced Ryzen 8000 CPUs for desktop. As you can see right here, we have some Ryzen CPUs, Ryzen 7 8700F and Ryzen 5 8400F. And obviously given the image here, these are for the AM5 platform. Now you might notice that this image looks pretty terrible and that's because these were announced in the Chinese market. So at least for now, these are likely gonna be China only chips, but don't forget as we saw with the 7900 GRE, this could easily come to the US market as well. Either way, as the name suggests, these are obviously CPUs without any integrated GPU. And in fact, these are based on Hawkpoint. Remember that Hawkpoint is the same architecture that makes up their 8000G APUs. So these are basically these APUs 
with the iGPU disabled. There's also an 8400F, but I'll get to that in just a second. First up, we have the 8700F, which should launch with 8 cores and 16 threads. Then, like I said, the 8400F, but given the fact that there isn't an 8400G, we're not 100% sure on the specs themselves. As you can see right here, video card says an educated guess would be 6 cores and 12 threads, possibly 2 Zen 4 and 4 Zen 4C cores. Either way, this is set to be a really interesting release because, as you can see, they say attacking every price point. So these are set to be some very interesting budget CPUs. Though, obviously, we don't have all the information just yet. But of course, as AMD ends up releasing these, time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for some better budget CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Maximum Settings down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.